right. All right. Let's see. We're going. We are ready. We are ready for topic number two. number ninety three, season four. And it's your suggestion. So what should we do? Hey Sharsa, Azuki. What up? Going. Hey Georg. So any suggestions on what I should draw? I'm all ears. Swamp King. That's pretty cool. Swamp King. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Sheldon. How's it going? The glorious number three. Next to Dr. Sheldon. Centaur warrior, hero on vacation. <laughs> uh, that's good. So we got Swamp King, Centaur warrior, hero on vacation, well of souls. Hey, boss, how's it going? And Amir, how are you, man? How's everyone doing? Shadow Reaper. Oof, such a. <laughs> hey, Zelly, how's it going? So we got one. Two, three, four, five, six. We got all six. All right. Let's um, dice roll. And of course, it's not this, but the next one. And number five, which is which is number five. One, two, three, four, five. One Amir Levy with Shadow Reaper. <laughs> Shadow Reaper. Oh, Amir. oh, Bruno Romanos has entered. Hey, Quentin, how's it going? Monster who can roll seven and a six dice. That's great. That's great. That's one epic end boss right there. Okay, Shadow Reaper. Shadow Reaper. Shadow Reaper. Mm. Shadow Reaper. I mean, we could go. Could go like Soul Reaver. Why? Way. Shadow Reaper. All right. Um, hmm. I got two pictures in my head. I can't really decide which one. All right. I'll go with one. See what I, it's not a, like a perfect great idea. Uh, it's also not. Um, the problem is, it's not an amazing idea. It's more or less, the idea is very basic, like a Shadow Reaper, is what I thought about was like a Matrix style character with a sword. That's like the Shadow Reaper, more or less. <laughs> like a name you would give a motorcycle. That that that's was the idea. And I saw this character standing, just kind of standing up and down with some light light in the middle. I don't know really what that light is. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but yeah, that's what I saw when that Shadow Reaper in like a, a Matrix style character or. I saw like the Soul Reaver type character, you know, the guy with a mask that he can pull down and then he sucks souls in. Uh, like that vampire character. Uh, but kind of hanging off a wall, 
a wall. And I thought like, mm, the hanging off a wall thing is like, yeah, it could be cool. A little bit done that earlier, seen that before. Like, yeah, it's a dynamic pose, but it's not gonna be a. I couldn't get a good design in my head of of what that could look like, other than the pose. The pose would be the driving factor in that concept, and then I chose the opposite, boring pose, and now it's just all down to the character, which is you know maybe a bad move on my end because I only have half an hour. Hey, Jeff, how's it going? Yeah, Soul Reaver is a classic. I had the pleasure of working on uh, uh, that series, actually. On Soul Reaver series. With Kane and... Raziel and whatever their all their names was it was nice to tick that box. I remember playing uh, versions of it on PlayStation One. I think it was, and I, I remember just being so impressed by that that those games. It's like, holy shit, that's a high class vampire game right there, and then. Years later, I got to check that box. Yeah, the game was pretty cool. Like, you were a damned vampire called a Soul Reaver, like, stuck in the netherworld. And, uh, you struggle to regain physical form um, and it was like a constant battle between uh, soul state and uh, physical form and you had to devour souls in order to to regain a power and then it jumped between um, a vampire lord and the soul reaver like two storylines going and you swapped between them Really cool. That I think that was the second game, or third. I don't, I can't remember. Legacy of Cain. Um, what was it? Legacy of Cain. Was it Legacy of Cain? Yeah, it was Legacy of Cain. Soul Reaver. And when you were in the underworld, it was like completely different uh, gameplay. And when you were the vampire lord, you you were this OP character that was just destroying humans left and right, uh, battling other vampire lords, solving puzzles. And then you were the soul reaver and in the spirit world, kind of trying, clawing your way up. And the idea is like this, this vampire lord you, you, you played as was... If I remember correctly, the reason why you play as Raziel, the um, Soul Reaver, I can't really remember, but it was something like that. Is the sound of the microphone weird? Is it, maybe it was scraping the shirt. I stood up, sat up straight a bit better. Hopefully, it'll be better. Amir, yeah, it was something like that. I think that was one of them. They uh, they released more than one game. So we could... Oh yeah, Bruno Romanos, yeah, I know, there's a noise gate on. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm unsure if I should have it on or not. Um, I can switch it off. 
like this now um, now it will be a constant even even noise <laughs> Now we will have the background white noise. You can tell me if it feels better or if the sound gate sounds better. The sound gate meaning uh, as soon as there's a sound over a certain decibel, it'll uh, activate the microphone. But as long as it's underneath that sound level, uh, the, there's an audio filter in OBS that will cap it. You prefer the noise yeah I, I, I mean to some degree I agree with you that uh, the idea of um, that that noise gate makes it sound like you're switching on and off the microphone all the time at least now even with the static white noise in the background it's still an even <laughs> even picture Hey, Miss Monster. Yeah, a little bit. Eight minutes late. We can, let's see, we can try uh, in between. Let's see the noise gate. Switch it on. Close threshold. I have really no idea what that means. We can raise the close threshold. And do that. How does this sound? Now it should be less white noise, but still some. Hey, Sammy Drawer. Um, the timer is, the stream is only half an hour. And I started uh, eight minutes ago drawing one Amir Levy here in the chat, uh, his topic. I roll a dice every morning. And the dice ended up with uh, his topic being Shadow Reaper. Uh, so now I'm concepting something in, in half an hour. Um, and then when timer ends, I have to continue doing my day job, which is a lead artist slash art director for video games. Uh, so I'll, I'll, what I usually do is I host some, or raid someone when the stream is over. And uh, we all go and, and look at what this other person is doing. And then I have to, uh, you know, do client work. But for half an hour every day, so you're free to join, uh, I'll, I'll, I will stream at the exact same time every day. So if you like the idea of a daily stream only for a short time, like the span of a coffee, feel free to join. Click follow. All that stuff. Pitch. Hey, Eric Ricky. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, Levy, I don't know what the, those values mean. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. I have no knowledge of it, so it's like mumbo jumbo. But this is the screen for the noise gate like close threshold decibel, open threshold decibel. And then you can uh, like uh, attack and release and hold for duration, I guess. Um, yeah, but I don't know the numbers, what they mean. Uh, hey, Ricky, 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 what up, yo? If I'm a freelancer, uh, yes and no. I, I work full time for an art sourcing studio um, where I am the lead artist, uh, art director. And uh, the studio is called Opus Arts. We do, we do concept art more or less for, for everyone. You name a game, and most likely, I've worked on it. <laughs> There's a huge, of course, there's a huge amount of games I haven't worked on, but there's also a huge amount of games I do have worked on, which is 
which is really cool which i love the fact of being able to help out on games and then seeing those games being realized and played and you can you can kill your own creations <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You think it looks like Mario Bros? No, I have an idea here. Um, I want to make him a little bit more demonic. I can t totally see the the Dino Mario Bros. Uh, or, or you mean the game, uh, if I worked on a game. No, I have actually not touched any Nintendo game. I have actually, that's one platform I have not touched or publisher I have not touched at all is uh, Nintendo. I almost uh, started at Nintendo Studio in 2006, uh, but I decided to go to uh, Sega instead. Um, less of a gamble. But yeah, I, I haven't played any or I haven't worked on any Nintendo games. Sadly, I'd love to though. I'd love to though. This whoa. Um, it's one of my my like uh, goals. I think in the career is to have a, at least one Nintendo title. Hey, Dave Deviant, Tarmod, what's up? How's it going? Yeah, I'd love to have worked on Super Mario. But, like I said, I haven't touched a single a Nintendo franchise game. I worked for Ubisoft and so on, that Ubisoft being on Nintendo platform, but not a Nintendo, uh, Nintendo game. Hey, FS bro. Hey, Bjorn, Bjorn Giordo. <laughs> That's so cheese, man. So cheese. Miss Monster, you can't see me at Nintendo? Oh, man, I haven't shown you my cute stuff. I drug a lot of great, cute, stylized stuff. It do I don't really show it um, that much on the like daily basis. But I'm really good at cute stuff. My wife says that, like, that's my my strength. I have done a lot of cute stuff. And I think. I worked for many years ago, I worked on a project that actually turned out to be uh, crudes. Because at the time when I worked on the project, it wasn't the crudes, uh, but a lot of it was the way it is. And I think they, they sold the pitch later because it was supposed to be a movie about uh, a family like with dinosaurs. And I designed a bunch of stuff, and then I didn't hear anything. And then Crudes came out, and I was like, Mwah. They obviously didn't use my designs, because the, the target had uh, moved, the goalpost had moved, in terms of style and, and story, but it was still like, is that crude? Is it, did I work on that? So I don't know, but I have a sneaky sus suspicion that that pitch was sold and then ended up being the crudes. Eric Ricky, yeah man, do that. I'd love to do. I'd love to draw a mushroom, a toad toadstool. One of my favorite games of all time is uh, um, a Nintendo game. A few of them, actually. 
One of them is uh, Super Paper Mario, the 1,000-year-old door. If you never heard about it, it's a really cool uh, RPG f from Nintendo about, with Super Mario. And he's, everything is based on paper. Like, you, you can roll Mario together into a roll, piece of paper and stuff like that. Turpentines and all these really cool things. It's a great story, really funny characters. Man, uh, such a good game. And uh, another one of Nintendo uh, favorite games are, um, or games in general, one of my favorite games in general, is a game called Animal Crossing. It's like a town, town simulator, where you like pick up weed, you decorate your home, you talk to your neighbors, you give them gifts on their birthday. Like it's super chill game, but it's so cute and it's so addictive. Yeah, man, it's so good. It's called Animal Crossing. It's like heroin for me and my wife. When our first baby was being born or delivered, we both were, while waiting for the baby to, you know, come out, uh, we were both just sitting, chilling and playing uh, Animal Crossing. <laughs> Miss Monster, Animal Crossing or uh, uh, Super Paper Mario? And obviously, all, all the Zelda games. All the Zelda games is like 100% pure gold. Animal Crossing, yeah, it's a great game. I mean, you really gotta be in the mood for it. And, and it's not an uh, action-packed game. It is r super chill. <laughs> But it's super so so cute. I really like it. And it's all like made up talk noises. Like they make really cute cute noises and man yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Dave Deviant, yeah. Yeah, and fishing and uh, Finding dinosaurs, uh, fossils, and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so good. Such a cool game. Zialin, yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Nuke? I think it was. He completely hustles you and puts you in debt for forever and you have to work it off in his store. And then he's like, yeah, you're paid off now, but... Uh, I still own you. Like, oh shit. <laughs> Georg. <laughs> yeah, man. In, in games like Red Dead Redemption, I always... I never play story. I hardly ever play the story. I just go and do shit, do stuff I want to do. And not so much the storyline. Well, I try to play the storyline, but usually it's just... Uh, the storylines are usually just a fetch quest uh, with, with a bit of uh, talk to it. <laughs> you know? Go there, do this, go there, do that, go this, go there, do that. Shoot that. Go here, do that. And it's like, ah. Do I really want to be bothered following specific steps that I have to do while hearing characters talk? 
or should I go and just explore and do do my own stuff? And it, it generally always ends up with me not following the story, not caring about the story, and just roaming. <laughs> Dame Deviant, yeah, that that mall that just gives you a, like a 15 minute lecture because you didn't save and you switched off the game. It's hilarious. Miss Monster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. That's a really funny story. Uh, on uh, GTA 5, there is um, like gangs, right? Um, kind of. You can create your own gang if you want to, more or less. Um, and I was, I was together with another guy um, who's a concept artist, and then there are a bunch of other people. Uh, we were in a group called um, Pussy Riot. And the idea about that group was uh, it was an all-female avatar group. So if you were in that group, you had to have a female character. And, uh, and it was all about like helping each other. If someone, even one crew member was attacked, everyone had to go there and, and destroy the opposition. And uh, like in races or, or things like that. Uh, it was like very supportive and I don't mind playing with uh, female characters um, in games for one specific reason and that is because I'm quite a good gamer and um, a lot of like what you said Dame Deviant about these kind of boys club uh, man babies they have a really hard time uh, losing to a girl even if the avatar that you play is a girl so i absolutely loved like the fact that maybe they thought i was a girl and i would destroy them and their ego was so so hurt and then the fact that as soon as they started fighting with me and and lost there was like four other gang members from the the that crew i was with showed up and started destroying that that's the other player as well so it was like you start just fight with one and all of a sudden you get destroyed over and over and over by five people and it was a really really a really enjoyable because what, what happened was that we created uh, all the the people in that gang uh, created like um a, a place where people uh, could grow as gamers because they were always supported we always did like um, practice team deathmatch with the gang. We, we were like, I think, 50 people. So it's like, oh, who want to play deathmatch? And, and you played it together, like the whole gang together, so that uh, even if you're not a good gamer, which you, girls usually are, you know, gener generally, because of they don't care to play games that much. Um, but they got to practice and in the end they got really really good and the fact that whoever was fighting us even if it was like a gang versus gang competition or anything they wouldn't know who's a girl who's a guy and generally what also what you did in that gang was you didn't say i'm actually a, a man or i'm actually a woman it was just like it doesn't matter uh, and everyone was just kind of helping but i loved the I love the abuse of all the people like sending me private messages of like how much they hated me and I should I'm a whatever whatever <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah I mean there was some players there I had no idea but I, I think they were w uh, women playing but they were really good but again it didn't matter because we flew under the same banner like uh, just helping helping 
players, uh, girls usually that are abused a lot in games, have this uh, sandbox of for other players so they could practice without uh, getting shit from other players. I mean, I got shit from other players just of the fact that I had a female character. <laughs> And they thought because I was in that gang that I was a girl, you know, so laughable. But I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed making them rage quit the game. Because usually what happened was like no mercy. As soon as they started fighting someone, the 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 rule in 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 that. In our gang was that you you only stopped attacking them when they they change server or they quit the game or they they go passive so they can't attack <laughs> so it just became a impromptu team deathmatch um, in the game it was just cars exploding bunch of women with machine guns <laughs> it was so good Yeah, it was really good. It was a great idea. It was really successful, um, this gang. It was even featured on like GTA's uh, home website and news, uh, like news update on the multiplayer, uh, like multiplayer news and so on. Hey, a voodoo breakfast has a gun. Oh shit, time's up. I'm not even drawing that good of a drawing. I'm just talking bullshit. Hey, a voodoo breakfast. Oh snap. You're subscribed for five months in a row, man. You almost have your number six. That's crazy. Thank you very much for the so support of Voodoo Breakfast. You're a star. Really appreciate it. But yeah, that 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 idea of um, like e uh, equalizing gang was a, was a great. I really enjoyed it, and the the gang was really cool. Like we had we had um, like meetups, gang meetups, um, in the game. So we would say, oh, on, on Saturday this date date, we all go to this place. And we all decided to go to one location on the map and maybe there was a dress code or all monster trucks or motorcycles only. And then we would go to team deathmatch. Then we would go fly airplanes. It was like an agenda for the whole evening or like Friday evening fun. Uh, and obviously like drinking games and stuff like that and the microphones. And it was really cool. Obviously in the, when, when you had microphones, you could spot who's a girl, who's a guy, but Oh, it was good fun. It's a cool, it's a cool group that made the GTA news. And in the end, they banned us uh, because of the name Pussy Riot. I guess some people got triggered and were like, "Oh, why they can't be called Pussy Riot?" But we spelled it with an I instead of a Y. But. Uh, yeah, apparently it didn't matter. But then they lifted the ban, uh, but like the damage that had been done, you know, controversy and so on and so on. I think the gang is still around. Um, I think there's the team deathmatch version or or chapter, I guess. Maybe it was still around, but I haven't played the game in forever, so I don't know. But the the in the heydays, it was really popular group, one of the biggest. A voodoo breakfast, yeah, exactly.
You should have uh, missed myself. Uh, it was a really cool, cool thing. I really enjoyed it. It was really good fun to just go crazy on people. No mercy. And in the end, like a lot of people, uh, they knew about the the gang's uh, policies of never giving up and destroying people until they give up uh, or change server. So he, it, it was almost like you were you would walk around unharmed because they knew, like, okay, I shouldn't attack these players because <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time if I do. Uh, this is so funny. Georg, yeah, I know. But, I mean, the thing back then was, like, if someone complained, they had to take action. Like, like Pussy Riot, uh, okay. Change your name. But we were like, why should we change our name? It's not offensive. It's based on, you know, it's not meant as a genitalia. But, you know, what could you do? They did lift the ban afterwards, like I said, but damage was already done. But yeah, I, I loved I loved being in that group. It was good fun. Okay, um, any suggestions on who to raid because the time is up. Right. Hey, thanks for the follow. Um, I don't know how to say your name. Tim Rimmers, maybe? Oh, they're animating. Cool. All right. We. Uh... Hey, a voodoo breakfast, yeah. <laughs> It's a shame, really. But tomorrow morning, show up on time. Um, right, so as per usual, I'm going to do the outro. When, when the outro is finished, I'll switch over uh, to the raid. So if you're new, join the raid on top. You get a notification at top. And um, we'll go and see what team members does. He's animating the, the character he's been working on. Anyways, you guys are the best. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks for the subscriptions. Really appreciate it. Um, you, the support is fantastic. Good night if you're in that part of the world. See you tomorrow morning. Bye.